So let's talk about five stocks and ETFs that I'm watching tomorrow and for the rest of this week and heading into this first month of 2019 so we can start off the year on a very solid note in the stock market. But before we do talk about this, guys, for all you new viewers out there, my name is Stas and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long-term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, that feel free to drop a like leave a comment and subscribe and follow me on instagram as well as on twitter and join our discord group chat as well as our facebook group all of those are linked down below in the description box and if you guys want to be in contact with me and about 385 other investors and traders on a day-to-day -day basis feel free to join our facebook group down there and our discord group chat guys very very helpful communities and both of those different platforms we're talking trading investing stocks news strategies and just you know helping each other become the best possible investors and traders in both of those groups and again everything all the socials are down below in the description box if you guys want to keep in touch with me and the rest of the community so let's talk about a couple five stocks and ETFs that I'm watching for tomorrow and for the rest of this week and quite frankly you know for the first half of January at this point so we can start off this year on a very strong note. So for you guys that watched my video yesterday, I talked about two uh, weed stocks right now that I'm very interested in trading um, that are at very interesting technical points. And we'll talk about those first. And I know uh, Enbev, which is one I'm going to talk about, is not technically a marijuana company. It's a beverage. I think they do like CBD beverage. Drop a comment down below. Let me know if I'm correct, but I'm pretty positive they they are in the CBD beverages, uh, you know, company, uh, you know, uh, industry, right? They're not growing uh, marijuana and they're not, you know, producing, manufacturing, any of that. I think they're just dealing with CBD. But again, drop a comment down below, um, you know, let me know if I'm right on that. But we can see right off the bat why I like NBEV for tomorrow and for the next couple of trading days, right? We can see I already have an alert here set at about $5.60 for NBEV and the reason why I do like NBEV right now is because it's forming a cup pattern, right? We are seeing, you know, the big sell-off here, which is the beginning of a cup pattern. We're seeing the consolidation on the 180 simple moving average here on the 180-day chart. And now all we would like to see, or all we need to see, rather, before the cup formation um, to be, you know, officially forming is to see the break of this resistance that I do have drawn out here at about $5.40. And that's exactly why I have set an alert for about 560. So ideally, guys, for NBEV, what I would like to see is a break up here right and then ultimately a break above 560 so we can get the notification of when it's starting you know the cup pattern it's starting to curl back up and uptrend in price and at this point guys you know am I going to invest once it you know pops up above 560 no I'm not going to invest right then and there ideally I would like to see it you know break above 560 and then break above this 50 SMA resistance right here so you know ideally an entry point point for me might be honestly in the you know maybe 580 590 range maybe even in the six dollar range because I don't want to force this trade I want the technicals to really open up the opportunity for me and that's what I'm just going to be waiting for in terms of NBEV so NBEV guys I do see potential from about 585 up to previous resistances which are at about 675 which do offer a 15 percent margin of profit on NBEV and if it does do what I just said that could potentially happen you know this might be a couple day you know swing trade maybe two three four days as it you know completes this cup pattern and at this point it might do a cup and handle type thing before maybe getting rejected by the resistance it might continue to push up um, you know and break this high you know we don't really know we just have to wait for the opportunity to open to us. This is something that I always talk about, guys. Don't force trades. It's better to just wait the opportunity out, sit on your cash, and then put your money to work when the opportunity opens up to you. So the second one I want to watch or you know look at 
is Kron, guys. Kron. And on a technical basis, guys, Kron is a little bit better um, than Enbev, and I'm, I'm about to explain to you guys why. So we notice, just like Enbev, guys, we are holding above the 180 simple moving average here, but unlike Enbev, we are making, you know, a upper staircase pattern on Kron right now over the past couple of days, meaning that we're making higher highs and higher lows. Notice on Enbev, we were pretty much stagnant at the support at around about like what, like 520 and the resistance at about 535. We aren't seeing that same, you know, a higher low, uh, you know, um, what's it called? Uh, you know, higher high, higher low pattern that we see on Kron, which is why I actually like Kron a little bit better. But what do we notice here in terms of Kron, right? We notice that pattern, right? We got rejected here by the 50 SMA, but we are still technically holding a higher low from the previous low at 1015 because right now we are at about $10.30. So ideally, what I would like to see Kron do here is, you know, hold this trend, start to push back up and test that same resistance at the 50 simple moving average on this 180 day chart and ultimately break above $11 to make that higher high before even considering putting money into Kron because I want to see it get out of that resistance level and I just want to see it get into the $11 range because we noticed in the past guys I talked about this in yesterday's video that you know, Kron has made many moves from around eight to eleven dollars, all the way up to about this resistance point at around thirteen, fourteen, fifteen dollars. So, you know, if we do get into the eleven dollar range, I think we could potentially run back up, maybe into the twelve, thirteen, fourteen range for Kron. Just judging off of these past technicals that we do see stemming back to August of two thousand and eighteen, and am I saying that this is going to happen? Happen, guys absolutely not right this is something that is 100% not guaranteed we could get rejected here and start pushing down breaking supports and making lower lows and pretty much breaking this pattern for all we know right but as of right now we're holding this pattern guys of higher lows higher highs from you know pretty much the middle of October and I do see potential guys to get back into 12 13 14 dollar range for Kron again if we do break this resistance distance point. So that's the second stock I'm watching heading into tomorrow and really for the beginning of January of 2019. And just to throw this in there, guys, marijuana stocks, although NBEV is, I don't think it is a marijuana company technically, right? Because they don't manufacture it. I'm pretty sure they're just a beverage company, but it doesn't matter, right? I'm just saying that these stocks, right? Kron, NBEV, Tilray, you know, CGC, Afria, Aurora, they're all extremely, extremely volatile, right? So be careful careful when you're trading these. You know, I would not um, trade these without setting a stop loss. You know, I always set stop losses on every trade, but especially on these these ones, guys, you have to set a tight stop loss, in my personal opinion, if you're trading these, because again, they're super, super volatile, and that's just how you're going to, you know, save money over time if you end up losing the trade, right? So set a stop loss, especially on these, and let's talk about some other ones that I'm watching. So Tesla is another one, guys. This one's at a very critical point right now, in my personal opinion, because we are right by a resistance or a new or an old support rather that is now a resistance at around 330. And this is stemming back to, I believe, June 25th of 2018. We can see Tesla sold off from this very strong resistance at about 375 all the way down to about 330. So this is something that you know we're seeing right here, right? We see you know, over the past couple of weeks from the, the strong correction in December, we saw Tesla fall from 374 down to about 292. And Tesla was a stock, guys, that was actually performing pretty well from the beginning of October. This is one of the only stocks. It obviously wasn't the only stock, right? It was one of the, you know, small majority of stocks that did pretty well, right? That did pretty decent from the beginning of October, which is when the big, big correction now almost a bear market um you know started to occur in the stock market we can see from the beginning of october guys you know we literally went from 247 up to about you know 
you know, 330. So Tesla did very well in the month of October and all the way up to about mid-December is when we sold off strongly down to 292, opening that profit margin. And now we've, we bounced on that support here at 290, which was a support here and here, right? We do see that from a couple months back. And now we're testing that resistance under the 50 SMA and at this old support that we do see from back in June. So if we break around 340, guys, I do think Tesla could be a good potential play. And remember, guys, you know, if the markets do end up continuing to push up since we have had a couple of green days in a row, I do think Tesla does have the opportunity to follow along that trend. But if we start selling off aggressively, you know, in this month of January, I don't think, you know, I don't think Tesla, um, you know, although we did do well in the month of October, right, maybe, you know, trading Tesla might not be in the game plan at that point because I'd be scared swing trading a stock when the whole market is falling, even though, you know, it did do well in October. That doesn't mean anything, right? Past results don't indicate, you know, future results. So I'd be a little bit, uh, you know, careful there in terms of trading Tesla, you know, when the, uh, you know, if if the market does end up going down, right? But hey, I'm just judging it off what we're seeing right now and the technicals that we're seeing right now. And you know, if the markets do have a couple more bounce back days, who knows guys, you know, Tesla might end up opening up for a decent trade in the next couple of days here. But let's just take a look. Um, you know, I'm going to set this uh, alert at around $340 at first. I'm going to make another alert at about um, $345. let us do that very quickly. Because again, I just want to get alerted, right? It never hurts to be alerted when the stock you're watching in your watch list, um, you know, is moving to the direction that you want to potentially trade it, right? So that's what I'm doing here with Tesla, Cron, Enbev. You know, it's just a very smart thing to do just to set alerts and constantly, constantly watch the stocks and uh, just see how they perform. Why are these on top of each other? Anyway, guys, um, you know, let me just cancel these. I'm, I'm just going to set them again very quickly. But, you know, anyway, guys, um, let's just take a look at some other. Uh, these are two ETFs that I'm going to be showing you guys right now. And I want to talk about these pretty closely. And one of them is uh, JNUG, right? JNUG is doing very well right now. And we've been talking about this one over the past couple of videos, right? So we've obviously seen the massive sell-off in gold, right? Gold is a, you know, is a... A metal that actually lost a ton of value over this past over these past couple of months, right? If we take a look on the one year chart, it was at about 1369 right here in about uh, March, April of 2018, and we sold off all the way to about 1167, right? That's a pretty decent drop, right? About 13%. And at this point, we found a new support level. We bottomed out once, twice three times, four times, and then we started to push up in price, breaking out of this 50 SMA resistance. Let me get my charger really quickly because I don't want this to die on us during the middle of this video. But now we see, you know, as we're breaking above this 50 SMA, which we did back here, right, we started to make higher lows and we broke above the, uh, you know, this, um, what's it called, the 180 SMA, and we're forming a cup pattern, right? This is the pattern that I want to see in uh, Kron and Enbev before trading them, right? We want to see that pattern happen here, you know, before potentially trading Enbev. Very similar pattern, right? We want to see that cup pattern start to form. So, you know, ever since GC slash GC has been getting out of that, you know, downwards formation, JNUG has been doing absolutely great. So what I want to see now, guys, is I want to see some sort of pullback in the gold futures um, before potentially trading JNUG tomorrow or the next day or even just heading into, you know, this next week in 2019. So I'm going to set an alert on JNUG, right? I want to see if it does pull back a little bit. So I'm going to set an opposite alert right now of what I did in the previous one. I want to do a mark is at or below alert here 
on JNUG, let's say at about nine dollars. That that'll be the first alert, right? I want to see it start to pull back, so I can maybe start building a position in this one if the technicals are pointing to that being a good move. So that's what I'm doing in terms of JNUG. You know, ideally, I would like to see it get back to you know eight eighty, maybe eight eighty five. You know, maybe eight ninety, right around here. And uh, just obviously watch gold futures as well to see what is going on, right? So. That is what I'm looking at in terms of JNUG, and let's talk about the final ETF here that I'm going to be watching for tomorrow and heading on to this next week in January of 2019. So the final ETF I'm watching for tomorrow, and I'm really just going to be watching this pair of ETFs, right? Because these have been extremely volatile over the past couple of weeks, and those are DGAS and UGAS. So let's take a look at, you know, natural gas, which is the commodity that, you know, DGAS and UGAS trade based upon. And for those of you guys that don't know, whenever natural gas is selling off like it has been, DGAS is going up in price. And whenever it's going, you know, natural gas is going up in price, that's when UGAS is going up in price. So we noticed the ridiculous sell-off in natural gas and the pattern that we're seeing here really just resembles a falling knife, right? We're just making lower lows after lower lows and it's decreasing in price. It's falling in price very very, very rapidly. So what is this telling us, guys? Let's take a look at some longer term technicals here on natural gas so we can draw out some support levels and maybe see where, you know, natural gas could potentially bounce, right? We really don't know, you know, where it's going to bounce, but the best thing we could do is draw some technicals. So we saw it didn't bounce at this spot right here, which was a new support level because, you know, we notice here, you know, this was a previous resistance, right? And when that gets broken above, which it obviously did when natural gas ran up to nearly $5, it becomes a new support level, right? So we pretty much blew through that support. We blew through this support at around 310. We gapped down this, I think this was two days ago. We gapped down from 329 to 310, held that support a little bit, made another lower low. And now we're going to be testing this support here, right? at about $2.97. So if we do break this, guys, which is what I'm watching for right now, I'm thinking about trading DGAS if we do end up, you know, gapping down all the way down to 270, right? That's a massive, massive drop. Do I think that's going to happen? I don't really personally know right now, but, you know, I'm going to be waiting to see what the technicals are telling me and what the reports, what the natural gas reports are going to be telling me, right? So let's say we do end up bouncing here to the upside. We break this EMA resistance. You know, that could be a good idea uh, or, a, or a good sign rather to trade you guys. But what I personally think is going to happen is that we're going to continue to push down, sell off, you know, up until that report, right? And if we see the report indicate that it's bullish for natural gas, then we'll move our money over to you guys and maybe play that one. But for now, you know, I'm waiting to see if it's going to gap down, you know, this next 20, 30 cents down to the next support, which is going to make D gas as a really good play for you know tomorrow the next day and probably for the rest of this week so that's it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed it if you did feel free to drop a like leave a comment subscribe follow me on instagram and twitter and join our discord as well as our facebook groups all of those are linked down below in the description box i hope you all had a fantastic 2018 i hope you all crush your goals in 2019 and happy new year to everybody out there i hope you all enjoy your day i'll catch you guys in the group chat in the morning peace out thank you for watching have a good one